If I'm going to say, I'm going to tolerate Matilda, this is what I think I'm really saying. I'm going to live my life, and I'm going to let Matilda live her life. I'm going to live and let live. For the past four years, I've been traveling all around the country, speaking to audiences about one really simple uh, topic, and that is tolerance. And so basically, I used my experience of living with Tourette's syndrome and this other intestinal disease that I had to convey this really simple idea of how little we know about each other's ideas. Tourette's syndrome is deemed by the medical community a neurological genetic disorder, which is sort of the medical jargon. In reality, this is what's happening with Tourette's. There is this itch-like sensation inside of me that's very uncomfortable. I mean, it really feels, it doesn't feel exactly like an itch, but it's the same idea in that it's an involuntary feeling and it's very uncomfortable. And when you see someone tick, that's the things that you might see on TV or if you know someone, the chomping of the teeth, the blinking of the eyes, the saying some words, that's actually that person scratching that itch. And so what happens is, is that that itch is so intense for that person with Tourette's syndrome is that they feel that there's no other choice in their life but to scratch it. I would think to myself, what is the riskiest thing I could do or say? And whatever that was, that became my itch. And that itch wouldn't go away until I scratched it. Growing up with the Tourette's syndrome, I lived a life in which I was experiencing a lot of people being intolerant of who I was. And when I mean intolerant, ultimately, they thought things about me, about who I was as a person, based off what they saw on the outside. You know, when I was ticking and doing all these crazy things. And it really got me to think about, you know, like, how often do we look at someone and we see them do something or they act in a certain way and we think we know what's really going on. And when the reality is, we don't. I've dealt like with a bunch of differences throughout my life. Um, and hearing someone else that has different issues, but some of the same troubles is just like really comforting for me. I mean, in my opinion, tolerance is sort of the bare minimum of how I want to potentially treat another human being. Hearing him again, it makes, makes me think even more of how intolerant I've been through to some people, how many uh, stereotypes I've made, and it just makes me think more that I should be uh, letting people live the, their life the way they are. My mission statement is the phrase live and let live, and it really just sort of embodies this idea that, hey, look, I'm gonna live my life and you're gonna live your life. I'm, I'm gonna live and let live. Today is just, my message is a small reminder. Because the reality is, is that one person is not going to hear a speech and then all of a sudden they're going to become the most tolerant or accepting person in the whole world. Is that this is something that takes work and it takes effort. And it's, I, I, I hope that my story is a reminder of how we can keep going on that journey. When we are being intolerant, usually, we're just making so many assumptions about that person's life. And then we act on those assumptions. I end my speech with a quote. That's an iteration, a quote from Plato, that's an iteration of something that he said, but basically it goes just like this. Be kinder than necessary. Everyone is fighting their own battles that you know nothing about. If you're gonna remember anything that I said today in this presentation, it really is just that simple, that simple phrase of live and let live.